This day and age, there's a lot of equipment out there to make your adventures as comfortable as possible. And today we're checking out the Wave portable aircon system from EcoFlow, which does look pretty cool. Yep, you heard correct. This is an air conditioner designed to be taken camping. What a time to be alive, hey? It's called the Wave and it's only just been released here in Australia. So EcoFlow has kindly sent me out this unit to test and review. But as always, they've had no input whatsoever on this video and everything we discuss is my own thoughts and honest opinions. Before we run through the specs and features, I do just want to make it clear that I know this is definitely a luxury item and it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea. I know there's going to be comments down below saying, oh, you don't need to bring an aircon system camping, get back to basics. And if that's the case for you, then that's totally fine. But there's also nothing wrong with bringing along a unit like this if it suits your setup. Everyone has their own style of camping and so long as you're getting out there and enjoying it, there's no right or wrong approach. So as far as portable aircon units go, there's been quite a few popping up on the market lately. And one thing I've noticed that really makes the Wave unit stand out from the rest is how much cooling power it has. So we get 4,000 BTUs, whereas most others in the market I've seen are around the 2,500 mark. A higher rating essentially means the Wave system will be able to cool down your tent, camper trailer or caravan a lot faster, and it can handle bigger areas. A lot of you are probably wondering about power consumption because I mean, it's an air conditioner, right? The same thing that makes your home power wheel go mental during the summer. Well, the Wave system is actually pretty efficient as far as air conditioners go, but if you plan on using it off the grid, you will need a pretty serious electrical setup. During my tests, the Wave drew about 500 watts of power when connected to a 240 volt outlet. Instead of upgrading your 12 volt setup though, you can get the Wave with an optional add-on battery which clips on the bottom. And there's also a built-in DC and solar input that accepts up to 200 watts, so you can fully charge the lithium battery in around 5 hours from either the sun or your vehicle's 12 volt socket. But you will need to buy those cables separately. The battery has a 1008 watt hour capacity which will run the wave system flat out for up to 3 hours. But depending on how well your space is insulated and what temperature you've set the unit to, it should start cycling on and off once it's reached your desired temperature. And that will give you a bit more than 3 hours of runtime. If you need a lot more however, you can also buy the wave system in a bundle with either the Delta Max that we reviewed a few weeks ago or the Delta Pro which both have a lot more power. And you can plug the Wave system directly into their 240 volt outlets, although EcoFlow does recommend you purchase an additional cable to run the air conditioner on DC power, making it more power efficient. But we could talk specs all day long, I reckon we should go and fire this unit up and see how it performs in the real world. Now ideally I'd be testing this out in either a caravan or a camper trailer because I feel that's what it's most suited for. Obviously I don't have either of those, so today we're going to be testing it out in my good old floor standing tent. So as far as setup goes, it's actually a pretty simple procedure, which uh, I'm thankful for because it's really hot in the tent at the moment. Obviously, I've already got the battery installed on mine, so I don't have to worry about connecting it to mains power. I'm just going to position it in the corner of the tent like so. On the back, we just clip on the included outlet panel, attach the two outlet pipes, which screw into place and extend, then run them outside the tent. That step is really important because air conditioners don't just make cold air out of nothing, they essentially remove the heat from the air. But that heat has to go somewhere so it's vented out the back of the unit and those pipes ensure that hot air is being directed outside the tent and not heating up the space you're trying to cool down. Normally I try to avoid hot days for filming because it's not very much fun, uh, but I specifically waited for the weather to heat up to film this video. It's currently uh, 34 degrees in the tent at the moment. Uh, I think it's about 30 degree forecast today, so a bit warmer in the tent. 34, I'm feeling every single one of those degrees. You can probably see the sweat dripping off my face. So let's fire this unit up and see how quickly it brings the temperature down. So to turn the unit on, literally all we have to do is hit this power button on top. And we have action, come at me cool air. So I'll just give the unit a couple of seconds for the compressor to kick in and we should have some nice cold air coming out this main vent. 
So I've got the unit set to 22 degrees and the fan speed is somewhere in the middle and I have to say the compressor is surprisingly quiet. It is making a bit of a weird rattling noise but I think that's because I haven't got it on nice level ground here in the tent because when I straighten it up a bit that noise goes away. So I'll do some more thorough testing and I'll put some text up here with my findings in that department but that aside it is surprisingly quiet. Bianca and I used to have one of those uh, house-sized portable aircon units that you clip into your window frame. And I sort of expected this to be a similar volume, but it's definitely quieter. And we used to sleep fine with that main unit in the bedroom, so I imagine sleeping with this would be no troubles at all. Although it is on half speed at the moment, so let's crank it to the max. Well, it's definitely louder, but I wouldn't say it's intrusive, so pretty happy with that. On top, we have these four main buttons. We have the mains power switch to turn the unit on and off as well as a timer, temperature, and mode buttons. On the front, we have a screen and adjustment dial. To change the fan speed, we just spin the dial, and to change the temperature, we just press the temperature button on top of the unit and spin that same dial. The screen shows us what the unit is set to, gives us the current ambient temperature, and when you're using the battery like I am, we can also see how much longer we can run the unit on the current settings. I gotta be honest, I am really impressed with how simple this thing is to use. I was sort of expecting it to be a bit of a nightmare because in my experience, products like these are always uh, a little bit tedious to, to get working, but I'm happy to report I haven't needed to use the instruction manual once, which I think says a lot. So well done EcoFlow on making a really user-friendly product. Even for charging the add-on battery, all I had to do was plug the regular power cable into mains power at home with the battery connected to charge it up. The timer function is also super handy if you want to go to sleep with the aircon running but don't want to run your battery flat. To use it, we just hit the timer button on top and spin the dial for how long we want the unit to run. You can also connect it to the EcoFlow app on your phone, which I imagine would be really useful if you're running it in a larger space like a caravan. It lets you fully control the unit as well as activating an extra mode called Eco Mode. As far as I can tell, Eco Mode seems to set the unit on bare minimum settings to give us the maximum runtime. So temperature is up to... Uh, 26 degrees and fan speed is set to minimum and that actually makes quite a significant difference to the estimated runtime. So before we had about 2.2 hours of battery life left on the unit but with eco mode enabled that runtime goes up to six hours. So that's going to be great if you're staying somewhere for a few nights and you can't charge the unit. You can chuck eco mode on. It's not going to give you the coldest nights but it will definitely take the edge off and help you sleep and it's going to run for a couple of nights. The unit's been running for about half an hour now and the tent is so much cooler. It's a, oh, a much nicer place to be. Um, my little thermometer reckons it's dropped it down to around 23 and a half degrees, which is great considering it was about 34, 33 beforehand. In terms of the pattern of the air, it's nice and broad. So uh, a little vent can be adjusted up and down and it seems like it spreads quite wide, which is great. It hasn't started cycling on and off yet. So we've been running flat out the whole time, but that's not too surprising because the tent is not exactly very well in. So if you're in the market for a portable aircon unit, the Wave system certainly works really well. It also feels super durable and uh, built to last and it's incredibly user friendly. As always, I'll leave links in the description down below if you want to check out more about this unit. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section down below and I'll get back to you guys as soon as I can. Obviously, I'm camped in the bush at the moment, but I'm planning on spending a couple of nights on a beautiful stretch of beach down south next weekend, a beach I've been meaning to check out for a long time. And of course, I'll bring you guys along in the form of a mini series. So stay tuned for that coming out soon. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Oh, this is the life. Hey, special announcement for those of you who have uh, watched this video all the way to the end. The channel will be officially rebranding in two weeks time.